Hi guys, my name's Tom, this is Watercolour Bites. We're gonna have a quick look at simplifying our subject. Let's go. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me in the studio. In this particular episode, we're gonna look at how we take our reference photo, which is this here, and how we simplify this down and edit it and interpret it into a kind of working painting. We don't always want to take the photo, or actually very rarely for me do I want to take a photo and copy it exactly. What I'm looking for is to take from the photo the things that I like, the things that excite me, the things that I want to say about the subject, and it's a process of kind of taking that and simplifying or reducing everything else so that what we try to say with our painting, our message becomes much, much clearer. So for example, if we look at this reference photo here, there's a huge amount going on in it, but what I'm attracted to is the light that's falling across that main person in particular, and also the interaction between the two people. So in order to make that really speak out and be the essence of my painting, what I need to do is really consider how I'm gonna take this photo and how I'm gonna transform it into a painting. That's what I wanna talk you through now and we'll end with a little time lapse of this painting. You can actually see a longer narrated time lapse over on my Patreon channel, along with loads of other stuff. Links in the description, let's have a look. This is the photo. I've been to Morocco various times. I absolutely love it. It's a fascinating place. We've got beautiful light, a very exotic culture, loads of wonderful colours and smells. And this is one of the reasons that I love painting Morocco so much. I've completely exhausted my own photo. So this is actually um, a copyright free photo I found online for a demonstration, but it's a great opportunity to look at taking a photo and translating this into a painting. So I'm not necessarily suggesting that you put a photo onto your computer and you do what I'm doing. This is more to illustrate my thought process. I might occasionally go in and do like a little thumbnail sketch or mess around with the composition. But really in, in how I'm thinking about this one is fairly straightforward and I think this illustrates the point fairly well. So the first thing to ask is what is the bit that interests me? the most, what is it that I want to say about this? So aside from the fact it's Morocco, uh, and I'm hoping that simply the story will come through in the figures themselves, what they're wearing, and also the colors uh, and that sort of thing. So aside from that, what really stands out to me is the pose of both of these guys and the way that the light is hitting them. So for me, it's all about the way the light is hitting these two. For me, that's the focal point. That's the thing that I really want to pull out of this. Everything else is secondary. And there's no right or wrong here. Everyone's going to look at this differently. But for example, I think this guy here is really interesting. This guy here. I also think all of these figures in the background here are really interesting. And on a different day, in a slightly different mood, maybe I'd focus more on creating a whole scene. It's not what I'm drawn to, it's not what excites me, it's these guys here that I'm interested in. So the first thing that seems obvious to do, and again, there's no right or wrong, but I, I'm very kind of drawn to really home in on them. That's, that's kind of number one thing that I wanna do. This crop instantly makes more sense to me because it's straight away editing out a lot of the information that's not relevant. Quite often we end up with a more exciting uh, painting if we edit things out and make the, the kind of overall design and our overall kind of artistic vision much more concise with what we're trying to achieve. What I'm thinking here is using tone to simplify all of this area here and really draw our attention to these guys here even more. It'd be nice to take a really deep, rich, dark, and you know, kind of do something like this and just simplify this area right down. And then what I do like, I love all these colors. For me, these conjure up Morocco very much so. Uh, I love this area, for example, in here. And I love the warmth and the tone of that and it traps the light on the front of them. So that's an area I kind of want to keep. And then I think in order to trap their heads and really make the most of their kind of heads, uh, I'm going to get rid of this guy here and basically just fill this area in, but steal some of the colors from the rest of the painting. So I love this color here. Uh, this is very crude. I am not an expert by any stretch, as you can soon see in using um, kind of photo painting software. This is purely to get an idea of what I want to achieve. The more I simplify it, the better 
it gets, and that's because I'm making the my my idea more concise. And you can see straight away what I've basically done is, and it's fairly obvious, is I've cut out all of the information that isn't in a line with my vision for this particular painting. So, and what I would want is all of this to be kind of wet into wet. You know, maybe even some some deeper dark still in here. Create some vertical shapes. Uh, which will really, you know, go a little bit darker even here to trap some of the light. And now our attention is very, very clearly drawn to them. But that's kind of my overall idea. So aside from that, the figures themselves, I think, are perfect. Like the, the more shadowy tone of his, uh, or the darker tone of his top traps the light on the front of this guy. So he's almost like the main focal point. He's a secondary focal point. Um, I love the interaction of the hands with the oranges. We need to be careful to simplify there so that this whole area doesn't become too complex. Love the way that the light shoots in here, hits the arm and shoots up his arm and then hits the face. So that, that passageway of light there is really important and I'm going to focus a lot of attention on that. This is more like a secondary focal point as is his arm. And then this tells me that this area here I will probably either simplify or maybe do it a little bit more wet into wet so that it doesn't draw attention away from the face. This is the area that I want to draw attention to. That's the theory. Let's have a look at it in the painting. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to kick off actually with the focal point in this case. So we're going to take a sort of process of laying in a lot of the lighter colours, but kind of linking that straight into some of the darker colours as the painting progresses. So. Here I'm using a nice mix of quinacridone red with a warm New Gambrose yellow. It gives us like a soft orange. There's a fair amount of water in here and I'm really just mapping out the basic bit of the face. This is the focal point so I really want to spend some time here. I really want to create um, some gentle form. So some slightly darker areas moving to some slightly lighter areas and leaving some whites of the page as those highlights. And that should dry really nicely and be ready for the stronger, sharper shadows over the top. So now we're into this lovely bit of light and colour on his tunic that he's wearing. And what I'm attempting to do here is to use the brush very quickly, create some broken brush strokes, leave some lovely strong whites of the page on the front of his arm, that little uh, passageway of light that I really love there. And again, I'm trying to create some form. So I'm going darker here. Notice I spoke about going darker on his back to draw attention more to the light on his face which I've already done at this point and then we will have darker shadows on there bringing some of those same skin colors trying to create form into the arm letting all the colors run together that blue has run into the color of the arm and in turn I'm just kind of naturally finding my way around the painting because I've got what I want to do in mind tonally where my strong lights are going to be where I'm going to simplify everything I'm, I feel more free to let the paint kind of flow together. I don't. I can paint like a bit more intuitively because I've done a lot of the thinking beforehand. And now I bring the colour straight round the back, exactly as we did in the kind of thought process stage, bringing all of that colour round the back, starting fairly watery but quickly moving towards it being dark. I spoke about wanting this really warm colour but realised that was a little bit too light, so come in with a stronger mix of quinacridone red. And I'm already starting to use the negative shape of the background to carve out the positive shape of the features of the men here. I'm kind of using a little bit more light behind the secondary guy, kind of like the photo but not as strong. Uh, I'm now straight into subduing the shadow or the light on his back so that it makes the light on his arm and shoulder shine out a lot more. I've also got some lovely soft wet into wet edges between his tunic and the background and those soft edges and those lost edges and those softer areas will really make the strong sharp lights on his face which is the focal point they're going to really stand out because I've simplified and softened everything else just like we spoke about in the theory section. Now that all this has dried I can come in and begin to look for those lovely strong shadow shapes on his face and this is when things start to get a little bit trickier but also when we start to see things really coming together. And the idea here is that these sharper, more detailed shadows in the focal point are always going to draw our attention. Smaller shapes that give the illusion of detail, more information, sharper edges, that's all going to pull our attention as the viewer to that focal point, which is where I know I want people to look. And that's going to contrast so nicely with the soft, simplified other areas. 
Now coming in with a strong mix of ultramarine and a touch of Prussian blue and we're going to look at these really strong abstract shadow shapes on his tunic. I'm not too worried about getting exactly the same colour. What I love is the tone and the way that that strong shadow area really highlights the light uh, again on his head and on his arm. Notice how that whole back area is significantly more subdued than in the photo. Uh, and just to reiterate, that's purely to bring that attention to his head. While it was still wet, the shadow, I dropped in some of those darker tones. And again, what we end up then is with soft, fuzzy shadows and those harder, sharper lights. I take exactly the same process in all of the oranges and the tomatoes that they're picking at. I lose a lot more edges away from the focal point. You can see that it's his hand picking up. Uh, some of the produce but you can't tell exactly all the details on there and again too much detail away from the focal point draws our attention uh, and it kind of dilutes what we're trying to say with the painting much more concise when I really do focus that attention in the focal area we're now shifting into smaller details and dry brushwork uh, and this is where things really start to come together a lot of fun at this final stage. We've done a lot of the hard work in that middle stage. Now it's just finishing touches, dark accents, uh, finishing off little details like the bag and bringing the whole piece together. Let's have a little look at the painting and give it one last analysis. And there we go. We know that my mission statement right from the start was to make his head in particular, the light down his arm and the light shooting across the produce, that kind of L shape to be the real punch of the painting. Secondary focal point of the hands and the face of the guy behind. Could get away with a reasonable amount of detail on the second guy's face, but notice how I've really simplified the hands down so that and not gone too dark anywhere with them so they don't pull attention away from his face. The background, very, very simple, taking the principles that I spoke about in the first part, going dark, going soft, using it to trap the light, the negative shape of the background, throwing out the very sharp, positive shape of the focal point. As we move away from the focal point, letting everything be simpler, more suggested, letting the paint flow together, generally allowing it to be darker, although those little specks of whites of the page keep things kind of lively and fresh and then very finally some of those punches of dark in the background and a little bit of dry brushwork uh, and creating some of those verticals and horizontals to kind of counteract and balance out uh, the slightly kind of softer wet areas so that we get a nice balance of texture fantastic fun to paint really happy with the end result so that's it guys i hope i've showed you some of the benefits of simplifying and editing your reference photo or whatever your subject is that you're looking at uh, and also giving you an idea of some of the ways that you can think about doing it uh, and how that will help you with your painting. If you enjoyed this, please do consider subscribing. There's loads more videos to come. You can find links to all of my other places online and everything else that I'm doing in the links below. Until next time, guys, happy living, happy painting, and I will catch you soon.